All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And if you have a CNC or if you recently got a CNC or you're considering to get the CNC, chances are the carved signs that you have seen were one of the things that kind of piqued your interest in CNCs. Now, you can do much, much more complex projects uh, with a CNC, but most of us that get into it in the beginning, it's going to be like catch-all trays and signs and things that are fairly simple. So today, I want to walk you through the creation of a project uh, that I'm going to be taking with me over to WorkbenchCon and kind of showing it off over there. So if you want to see how I take and go from an idea to a project using the CNC, stick around and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so next month I'm going to be going over to Atlanta. This is going to be my second trip over to WorkbenchCon. Uh, last year when I was there, I met some, some, some cool folks, other content creators, companies. Stuff. One of the companies that I met over there uh, was the folks over at Vectric, and this is what we're going to be making uh, today in the video. Of course, I've already got it made, so we're just going to be putting the video together at this point. But this is what we're going to be making, and this will be going with me over to WorkbenchCon, and I'm going to make a couple of other things too. Uh, but the folks over at Vectric said they'd like to have a couple of things on their booth that were made with Vectric and not have to worry about trying to get them through customs and stuff like that coming in from England. So I made this for this event, but I'm also going to display it uh, in the shop here when it's not in use at events. So there you go. So that's what we're going to be making today, guys. This is basically just a piece of three quarter inch. Uh, it was actually a leftover piece that I had. I confess I'm using scrap for this. Uh, but it was a piece of three-quarter inch uh, poplar that I had laying over there. And I literally just threw the idea together, threw it, threw it together, slapped some paint on it, sprayed it with some clear, put some little feet on the bottom of it, and we're good to go. So I'm going to show you the process that goes into this uh, using Vectric and my Shapoko and a couple of tools, sander, chop saw, that kind of thing. So we're going to go through the process and show you how it's done. So let's move over to the computer. This is the logo that they have. Uh, that they're using on all their stuff now for their branding. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is try to replicate this on a piece of material, uh, back fill it with paint and all that. I've got a piece of material over on the machine now. Uh, the only thing that I didn't do is I did not mask it. I had considered masking it, but we may just, we may just go at this without masking. Just make sure we clear cut it really well. I'm, I'm getting to where the masking gives me a false sense of security and I end up doing worse than I do when I just spray it with clear coat and uh, backfill it that way. So I'm gonna create a new file. This is uh, just throwing up basically from the last job that I did. So the width on this piece of material that I've got over there for now is 950 by 140. So this is gonna be 19.6 is the thickness of this material. Uh, I'm gonna be using bottom left corner uh, the material settings, it, this doesn't really matter. You can put that as whatever you want. That's just for the visual effect. Uh, I don't usually pay that a whole lot of attention anyway. So this is our this is our piece of material and that's the way you wanna start. You basically want to create your board or your wood or your stock, whatever you wanna call it, in the workspace uh, based on its dimensions. I've got that in there. So now we're going to import that uh, image that we downloaded which is their logo which i don't know why it's showing up like that I, that's weird okay but there it is uh, i downloaded this from their website so that we could have it to use and i'm just going to resize this guy here i want to be able to trace it and it fit on the material but i kind of want to get it as big as i can with the material and part of the reasoning for that guys is with uh, with this design, with this method of engraving, these really sharp corners right here with a round bit are not really feasible. Like these little these little points here are not going to be feasible with a round bit. Uh, with a laser, I could I could definitely make this exactly this shape, but with a uh, with a, with a, a rounded bit, it's going to be a little. A little manipulation to the file done so we got that in there that is going to be our 
basic our image that we're going to use to create the rest of this file with. So then we're going to select our graphic and go over here and use the trace tool. And I'm going to try to, uh, most of the time I have pretty good luck with just the uh, basic settings on here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the black as well as the yellow to be traced. Uh, leave all this stock and just kind of look at it and see what it looks like. Uh, the best we're going to do with these corners, like I said, it's even though they look sharp here, it's going to round those off uh, in the in the in the long run. But all in all, I think it did a pretty decent job of tracing the image. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to hit the apply button, and that should uh, give us the image as we need it for our tooling. Now. These, th even though these shapes are different colors and they're going to be painted different colors or whatever, th there's not going to be a whole lot of difference in the tool path that I'm going to use for these. So I'm just going to go ahead and group all of those together as far as my, or select all of those together, I guess I should say. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set up a pocket tool path for those. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and go with two millimeters depth. Uh, that way, especially with me backfilling this, uh, if I do get a little bleed over or something having that two millimeter depth is going to give me a little more uh, room for sanding to uh, sand some of that off in the event that i in the event that i mess up hopefully i will not but you know just in case uh, so we're going to go over here and name this layer engrave and then i'm going to calculate it out and we'll go in here and preview this tool path and see what it's going to look like and you can see what I'm talking about as far as the edges. See how it's rounding these edges? Because the tightest corner we can make on the inside is the diameter of the bit. I'm running an eighth inch bit on this job. So that's going to be as, as tight as I can get without going down to a, a really, really tiny bit. And so that's that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna go with it. Because I do not want to drag out any of the little eighth inch bits and sit here and wait on it to chisel it away. So that's what, that's what uh, we were talking about earlier with it rounding these little corners. The, the diameter of the bit dictates the smallest corner you can go into. Now, on the outside, uh, if we were making this raised outwardly and taking the rest of this down, which we could do if we wanted to try to retain that, uh, then, yeah, we could do it a different way. So, so I'm going to go ahead and put a square rectangle shape in here uh, so that I can center everything. So I recalculated the tool pass just so everything lines back up and we're good to go. All right, and if you don't want to use a cut line to cut this out, like with this situation to where the material is basically the same size as what you know our sign is gonna be, uh, one thing you can do, once you get everything lined up using this little square, make sure you got it all perfectly uh, square and everything. And come up here and <clears throat> draw a line from the, where these intersect right here. Uh, I can draw a line from there and bring it down to <clears throat> here and set that there. All right. And then once I do... Now I can actually take this other line that we had over here, uh, the square rectangle, and I can delete that guy. And so now all I've got is this. And what you can do just to, to, to use your tools to try to make things as uh, exact as you want or as you can, you can go right through here. I'm just going to put a, a one millimeter deep line, basically. I'm just going to use the CNC to mark where I need to cut at with the uh, with the saw. And I'll just take it over to the chop saw, knock that off, and then we can take it to the, if we wanted to round the edges, we could take it to uh, the router table or grab a handheld router or whichever. We'll, we'll play it by ear, but that's what we're, that's what we're gonna do there. So I'm gonna just put this as a one millimeter pass down through there, add ramps to it and calculate. And so when I go into preview, you'll notice that what it's doing is it is basically just putting me just a, a go by line right there on the outside of where this thing needs to be cut. So that's an eighth inch bit that's making that line. So basically you drop an eighth inch saw blade in there on the chop saw and you're good to go. 
Uh, so that is, if we wanted to do recessed uh, here and then uh, have the text be lower, that's how we would go about doing that. Oh, I did, I did need that uh, square or that rectangle now that I think about it. So we can uh, bring that guy back in here. Uh, and I can actually set that with this as part of a path. So, and then I'll say this is a pocket, two millimeters, calculate. All right, so now we're gonna do the opposite of, instead of having the text uh, recessed and the surrounding material taller, what I've done now is this is gonna try to preserve uh, the, the text a little better and sacrifice the outside. So now, now what it's trying to do <clears throat> is it's gonna do this. The problem now is that because our bit is an eighth of an inch bit and that's as small as it gets, now we're having issues with this text down below. Now, the one way that we could go appro approach this and fix it would be to take and remove that bit there and we would come in here and let's say we used a tapered ball nose. That would probably get us pretty close well, we could do a V-bit, but that ball nose is actually going to move a little faster. So I'm going to go over here and select that taper ball nose, recalculate the tool path, and reset preview. Uh, preview visible tool path. I'm going to calculate that. And see, still not, I got a little more detail, but still not a whole lot. So there is the problem with, with, with CNC's. That's something that you have to take into consideration is the size of the bit is going to restrict what you can and cannot do so all in all i think this is uh this is going to get me started on the one project for right now so we're going to go ahead and just make sure i got everything set up i'm going to look at this see how long this one's going to take we're going to add uh, 10 seconds for that little rip and then uh, nine minutes and 12 seconds for the engrave so you're going to have a 10 minute project all together with as far as the csc stuff goes I've already got the machine set to zero, so now all we've got to do is save the file. Uh, both of these cuts I've got set to run the number two uh, eighth inch mini Jenny, uh, which I think I'm actually running number three. I'm actually running number five, so we'll go over here and fix this because it's no biggie, but just in case. Uh, so the mini Jenny Slim Gen, that's the one I'm running. So we're gonna put that one in there and calculate that up. Same thing here. All right. So. Uh, visible tool pass to one file because I want all of them to be ran at the same time. I've got both tool pass turned on. So that's gonna do this whole job in one file. So I'm gonna save that over to my CNC machine. This is uh, actually just a location on my machine over there that I can uh, I can save files to. And I don't have to put them on a thumb drive or anything. Send that over there and then we'll get over to the machine and we'll send it.
All right, guys, so with this kind of project and a lot of the other projects, you don't have to have a really big piece of material. Uh, the material that I used on this project is literally these here. It's about a six foot tall piece of poplar. Uh, this piece is about three quarters of an inch thick. You can pick this stuff up at Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that. Uh, it's not as expensive as some of the other harder woods. Uh, I also, a lot of times, will use uh, the oak as well. And you can, like I said, these, these boards, now they're going to be a little pricier uh, because the hardwoods such as the oaks and walnuts and stuff like that always are going to bring a premium compared to something that's as common as poplar. But poplar is one of those woods that it will take most any color stain that you want to put on it. Uh, finishes, like it sands really easy, it tools really easy, cuts. It's just a really forgiving wood. So if you're new and you're into making signs and making things, uh, I think poplar would be a really good go-to for a material to look into. So there you have it. But yeah, this is, uh, like I said, this is where I keep just random pieces of material a lot of times for the CNC because I don't always want to use oak uh, to make projects, but oak is one of my more favorite materials to use. So guys, if you're going to be over at Workbench Con, uh, feel free to drop me an email, send me a message, whatever, let me know. Uh, Steve's supposed to be going over there with me, so the two of us will be there for the duration. Uh, we'd love to meet up with you guys, maybe uh, go grab something to eat or whatever, uh, or just hang around and talk shop. It's always fun to meet folks that have helped uh, the channel get to where it is, because without you guys, there wouldn't be a channel if nobody watched it, right? So, yeah. But WorkbenchCon uh, will be coming up, so drop by and uh, check it out. So, till next time, be safe and have a good day.